everything and I want to uh, be able to go see anyone and just kind of listening to what they have to tell us as a journalist. And so being a journalist was a way to be of a specialist of nothing and everything at the same time. Like we don't, we don't know what we are do going to do next day. Hello, my name is Eline Perez and you're listening to Are You an Artist? Today's episode is with Kilian Moreau, who speaks about photography, journalism, but also having snakes. Yes, he does. Kilian is extremely humble and genuine and takes the time to find the words to answer the best, my strange questions. Again, a technical mistake. The washing machine was on. Kilian said, hey, we could turn it off. And I said, no, don't worry. It'd be all right with the montage. Clever. Luckily, the content is so rich and good that I'm sure you will not notice anything. Enjoy. Est-ce que ça fonctionne Est-ce que tu m'entends Est-ce que je dois crier <rire> Ah non, tu deviens rouge. <rire> <rire> si je suis rouge, ça sature. <rire> so, Kylian. <rire> Hello. Hello. <rire> so, I always start um, each episode by reading out a letter I've written to the guest. Ok. So, I'm going to do it now. Dear Kylian, you are one of the rare people from school I am still in touch with, so congratulations. <laughs> you passed the test. Even if we studied in different places, I remember following your adventures through the beautiful photographs you will share on Instagram while traveling to French towns I hadn't been to, to Stockholm or Dakar. You made me want to go there. I always enjoyed seeing you listening to your journey into journalism, your way of perceiving the word, your curiosity and open-mindedness. I don't know much about your life now, so I am looking forward to this hour together and asking you the first question of this podcast. Are you an artist? Okay, so first, thank you a lot for this letter. And to be honest, uh, you are also one of the few people I'm still in touch with after school and everything. Uh, and... I'm kind of following you through your journey as a, as a dancer and an artist uh, in London. So am I an artist? Uh, honestly, I don't consider myself as, as an artist because I really enjoy watching it and using it as an inspiration for my everyday work. But... Um, journalism is always uh, kind of showing what reality and something close to the truth uh, we try to tell a story that is close to the truth and so the artistic part is sometimes used but on small level like, yeah mm. small level just as I'm using it as an inspiration more than kind of really creating something from my head or from my ideas. Do you still do like photography? I, I still, uh, but m less since my job is uh, filming with a camera for the TV. So um, I, I don't take picture every day as I used to do before. Okay. When I was in Stockholm, for example, you would take a picture every day. Every day, I was trying to take one photograph, and sometimes when it's like dark and snowy. Oh yes, of course, you, in winter. You have to find something to kind of tell your uh, the mood you are in. So at this period of of my life, I was really tr trying to push myself into photography and trying to be better every day, but. For now, I'm filming every day for the TV, so I'm, the photography hobby uh, is not so important. So I'm more like enjoying it on holidays, or but even on holidays, I only take my camera with me 
on really short period of time mm -hmm. because I know I, I, I'm, I have two hours to take pictures and in between these two hours will be my memories of where I am or I will take only 10 pictures and that's good. I, I don't, I don't take pictures every day, every of everything. I, I really choose the moment I'm taking pictures because I'm in a mood to, otherwise I f it feel like I'm working again, you know, I, you know, it's really similar to the, the camera I use. I actually have the same camera on my own than the one I'm using at work. So mm -hmm. it really feel like I'm working on holidays when I take pictures. <laughs> so it's... You're like, no. Yeah. So it has to be worth it. So last time I was in Zanzibar, the only time I took my camera to take pictures is when we had the chance to enter a village and enter her house. And I was only seeking for one thing was portraits of women who... You, that you don't see uh, a lot in the streets. And so they were inside their house with the children. They had no veil. Uh, they, and just like natural portrait, they didn't knew we were coming. And that's the, I, I took like maybe 10 pictures of villagers and that's it. Mm. That's the only moment I use my camera on a 15 day trip in Zanzibar, a beautiful island where everything is beautiful. But I took only 10 pictures of like uh, faces of people. Wow. And what do you do with these pictures? <laughs> do you print them or? I, I would love to uh, make a kind of a book for my mom, but uh, I, I don't have the time. I would, I would have, I wanted to give it to her for Christmas, but I didn't, I didn't succeed to print it uh, on time. And I would love to edit more the picture, mm -hmm. but I don't have, um, the good software and, uh, and not the time to do it. A lot of my picture are still in my camera right now Okay, and they are waiting there. <laughs> That's a bit sad. I know. And so what, how would you describe an artist? Um, in wh what I know is an artist is someone who will take their point of view and their perception of the world to tell something they feel kind of, and so for me, photographers like uh, I, 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 I'm re really a big fan of a photographer, French photographer, who is William Daniels, mm -hmm. who is a photographer who makes news and documentary photography. Mm -hmm. So he is a photojournalist and he is someone who is kind of telling story and bringing reality to the eyes of everyone telling story around the world and everything. But the way he do it, he has really a, a weird way, his own way of doing it. And I remember him telling that he was always um, not on the good timing to the big news and everything. He was never uh, at the good place at the good moment for a good like news photo, um, photojournalists. So for, I know he's dating uh, another photojournalist who is uh, Véronique de la Viguerie. Mm -hmm. And she's uh, like really known for Taliban's pictures. Mm -hmm. And herself is a really impressive news photojournalist. She is always on time, always on the good story and always like perfect place, perfect moment. That is really important in journalism. William Daniels is never on that timing. He is sometimes waiting for the good lights and waiting for, for um, a mood. Really, his pictures are really particular, mm -hmm. kind of. And I really love what he's, he's doing. And I think 
is in my field in image uh, the closest to an artist and still doing news and journalism but also various photographers like uh, uh, Crozon, Croz, Croz, I don't remember her name. Hello, Eline from The Montage. Kilian is indeed speaking about the photographer Céline Croz. Who is do doing something really moody and but with everyday life people. Okay. And I always consider them as they use their own feelings to tell what a story and the life of people they met and but that's really an artistic approach of journalism and images hmm. so yeah my, myself i'm like the tv has not a lot of place for artists in journalism Hmm. There is not many like uh, TV reporters that are artists, kind of, I, I think, hmm. because the timing are always too short to be creative or something. Hmm. And what's your first creative memory? Like as a child, is it a drawing or like, I don't know, hmm. first time you created something? I created or I've, uh, I don't. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, <laughs> I used to draw animals when <laughs> I was young, like horses. And I remember drawing one quite well and I was really happy. I never succeeded to do it again <laughs> after. <laughs> uh, do you still have it? I don't think so. Oh. Maybe my, my family, I don't know. Oh. I don't know where, uh, I don't, but it's kind of a memory of a drawing. But after like, for me, images, uh, my uncle did a lot of travel and, and like uh, travel photography when he yeah. was younger. And I was quite young, like, like around 10 and watching his picture was something really important for me later on because I decided to go in the image field kind of mm. and do something with with uh, like uh, telling story with images hmm. and so you were already interested in animals yeah a, a lot a lot uh i i wanted to work around animals uh, when i was younger and i i kind of uh stopped for like going into like scientist uh, stuff because uh, I doesn't I don't want to be a specialist I want to be a specialist of nothing and I want to uh, be able to go see anyone and just kind of listening to what they have to tell us as a journalist and so being a journalist was a way to be of a specialist of nothing of uh, and everything at the same time, like we don't, we don't know what we are do going to do next day, but uh, we can be in a field with cows and a, a farmers who, a farmer who is telling us uh, his problem. And the next day we are with uh, the like police officers on a crime scene or uh, the next day on with politics and and the next one with scientists and we see so many different things in one day it's really interesting and and when i realized that i didn't want uh, that i don't want to be a, a animal specialist and i was especially interested into reptiles <laughs> and uh, snakes and frog and everything i i realized it was really a narrow so narrow specific. fields really specific field yeah. and it's it's still like a passion kind of uh, in a, uh, uh, in my head but i i prefer what i do now and i i really have no regrets of dropping the scientific uh, field hmm. and as you were growing up do you feel like it was um, a space where you could explore your creativity like with your family or at school or 
Mm, not really, because the, um, my family is nothing close to artistic field. Uh, they are, are not really into that. They don't listen much music. Maybe my mom a, a little, but we are not. Uh, re- there is only my uncle who is into photography. Mm-hmm. And so it was my only connection kind of in my family with uh, the artistic uh, field. But in school, I don't think so. I, I didn't felt like school was a good place to uh, become an artist or anything. <laughs> uh, uh, it really come for me when I went to... I was into photography in high school and when I went in Stockholm later on, uh, I met someone who told me you should keep going uh, with photography and I was not really uh, into journalism yet. I was in transition between scientists and journalism. I was not, I didn't knew what I will do later. And so in Stockholm, I met this person who told me you should keep going uh, with photography and I that's when I started okay I'm going to take one picture a day and and that helped me a lot to uh, to progress and to kind of seek for advice with other photographers in Stockholm Uh, like classic photographer and and I had the chance to meet like photojournalism photojournalists there so they told me yeah keep going but it's really difficult to make a living out of photography so Mm -hmm. I choose the tv because it's easier much easier to find works and to have like a job Hmm. a stable kind of Hmm. and when you because you still take pictures and and photographs when you do it What's the feeling driving it? What makes you want to do it? Um, f- for me, taking a, an image, even with like for the TV or a picture, is the most simple way of telling a story. Uh, it's the easiest way to understand what is going on uh, somewhere because sometimes you don't even if the image is good or the the picture is is really good you don't need much more to understand what's happening in the picture what's the feeling of the people in it or what and so for me it's really a simple way to express uh what we we are feeling as a journalist on the field we are going somewhere we are taking images and these images are here to tell the people what's going on there so uh, it has always been for me a uh, an easy way to to express like the feeling of the people we met and it's a uh, really the simplest way of doing it like if we don't speak the same language we can still understand the same pictures because you don't need to speak or to read or to write something with a picture Hmm. and what makes a picture good (laughs) i don't know it's the (laughs) people who is watching it (laughs) it's it it doesn't it's like a you know, uh, it's like wine. Uh, if you don't like it, then it's not a good wine. You can, uh, whatever it is, like the picture. If you if you feel something when you watch some a picture, then it's a good picture for you, and it doesn't have to be the same for the next person after you. <laughs> and do you prefer to work on your own or with people? With people, always. That's also. Uh, um, really important part of why I choose to work on TV because we are always working with a team 
and a photographer is sometimes alone and it's much easier uh, to be in a team. So I prefer working with other people because we can confront uh, visions and and getting closer to to what reality it avoids uh, us to make mi- mistake. If you are alone, you can kind of uh, transfer your own vision of something and sometimes it's good as I said it's a good way to be an artist but uh, if you want to be closer to the reality you are never into the reality perfectly but if you want to be closer it's easier if you are a team because you can sometimes resist to pressure or to your own education you can kind of say I I think uh, Uh, it's a bad situation and the other person will say, oh, uh, calm down, it's not that bad. Uh, And it's easier to (laughs) get something more nuanced, uh, more balanced, Mm -hmm. kind of, with a team. But I'm pretty sure, alone, it's easier to um, kind of do an artistic work. But it's not what I'm really seeking, seeking for. I'm here to... Um, tell a story and the most understandable story for everyone not what I feel is a good story but you know I don't I don't know if it's clear what I'm trying to (laughs) express for me (laughs) (laughs) if people don't understand it you're bad (laughs) people (laughs) so what do you prefer in your work Uh, meeting new people every day it's definitely the most interesting thing to do and being with uh, someone important or uh, really classy one day and the next one being in the mud with like cows uh, and uh, and on a tractor uh, on on the field uh, on the plane sometimes it, it, every day it changes and that's what really matters to me in my everyday life and meeting so many different people and kind of um, I really we as journalists we have to really work on our image as journalists because uh, the TV is not so good but on the field uh, we we really pay a lot of attention with uh, to be honest with people like we are here to tell because you are in this situation and we will speak probably only about this situation because we have so a short amount of time to tell a story that will speak to every French people mm. uh, and so to be honest on our work and um, to to meet like uh, new people every day. Mm. And do you have like a a top three of people that you really enjoyed meeting or you can really remember? Yeah, William Daniels, as I told uh, before, is really someone who has been important uh, to realize um, what's uh, kind of being a good photographer uh, means and it's not only because I really enjoy this picture but I also really enjoy uh, the way and the his approach on of every picture like what he is doing what he's waiting for and and so is one really important I had the chance to met Paul Hansen in Sweden before, mm-hmm. who is also a photojournalist. Uh, um, he has worked on many uh, like war fields, kind mm. of. Uh, but with always a really good sensibility of what war mean for everyday life of, of like for the life of the people who are under the the bombs and everything. And he is really impressive for 
because he is really calm and he seems really empathic, kind of. And as I think it's really important for a photographer or someone who is taking image to kind of feel a situation and be empathic. Mm. Um, and the third one, mm, I don't know. I, I can also talk about Véronique de la Vigrie, mm -hmm. uh, but it, it was kind of uh, on... Um, What was really interest, interesting uh, with Ver Veronique is uh, that she is uh, like a winning prize uh, photojournalist and she is really like known around the world for her pictures. But also uh, I, m I met her at the same moment as William Daniels. And what really interested me is that they are two photojournalists kind of speaking not on, of the same subject, but sometimes they have work uh, on the same subject and they have really two uh, different approach. And it was really interesting for me to compare uh, two photographers that I, I really uh, like admire uh, their work, but their their point of view on on what photography is and what images is and how they use this medium to tell stories is really different and that was really uh, uh, important for me to to understand that everyone who is holding a camera to take pictures or uh, tv image uh, has a point of view and the way you are taking a picture is not the perfectly it's it's your point of view of the situation because if you if you stay there you will take this picture with this light and if you go uh, around the same subject the picture will be totally different and so hmm. what you are kind of showing to p people is really really new and really it can change everything two photographers on the same scene can take two really different pictures and that's kind of weird to understand as a younger uh, photographer who want to be a journalist and who want to kind of show real uh, reality and it's impossible because you have a point of view on every situation and just the point of view of the camera kind of yeah, like where you places where you place yourself yeah. around the subject can matter a lot in the feeling you're transmitting mm. and is there one work that you've done that you're really proud of mm. no <laughs> no <laughs> Uh, or a little bit proud of? Everything I've done so far is kind of uh, on... I need to progress. Every time is it's not perfect and it's not what... It's not close to the um, people I just talked about. And I, I want to... I want to progress every every time, and when I finish a, 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 a news a, a reportage. Eileen um. um, from the montage reportage in English is a newspaper report, I think, according to Google. So every time I I'm, I finish a journalist story is um, we have a short amount of time to to finish it and to to send it to the TV broadcast. So uh, it's never perfect. So it's always kind of frustrating because 
you can't be always fully satisfied of this work because we have so much pressure on time. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there is nothing I'm really proud of as a uh, as a finished product, but uh, I'm happy to have to have had some experience, like uh, working for the, um, in Africa, for example, is something that I really enjoyed. Uh, but it's more, it's not, I'm proud of that. It's more that, uh, I had the chance and I'm really grateful and it's more selfish, uh, uh, it's kind of a sel selfish achievement, but is it's not like what I've made there, uh, doesn't make me really, really proud of, uh, mm. uh but I had the chance to wor work on, uh, Chim uh, like chimpanzee, chimpanzee. Again, I'm useless with translations. So chimpanzee in English is simply chimpanzee. Voilà. Like monkeys uh, in the in Guinea uh, that were kind of fighting with villagers because they have no more forest uh, to stay in because uh, villager and like big companies there cut the forest to make roads or uh, fields or anything. So the, um, that's a good story to tell and that's interesting. <laughs> but that's uh, like at the end, what I've made of this story is uh, is not perfect. It, it could have been, bet been better, but we only stayed two days in uh, one village. Uh, we met a woman who... Uh, who the daughter has been attacked by a, a monkey and mm. kind of hurt uh, by it. And we went in the forest, like chasing the monkey to make images of them. But it was really on a short amount of time, so it's definitely not perfect. And, uh, and for um, like uh, five minutes on the TV, uh, it's almost too short to be to tell the world story like everything mm -hmm. ar around the problematic of uh, chimpanzee and monkey is there but can you ever tell everything no definitely not um what's important is not Like it's like uh, with images, you are always limited because uh, if you want detail, you need uh, like the best medium is uh, writing. Yeah, is I had a flashback because I remember I preferred like reading novels when I was young and even now I think than watching a movie because and then, for example, like reading, I was a fan of Harry Potter and then watching the movies and all these details missing. Mm. I was very disappointed. Yeah, but uh Like, it's so much easier to tell details with a write, a writing a story, but it's not um, so accessible to read, like, news. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, the TV is the first door uh, to get access to information mm -hmm. and to get access to the world and... Uh, and So it's always about uh, transmitting um, an emotion and so and something. So when we met the mom who had problem with uh, her children and the chimpanzee and the monkeys, um, it's so like it's so universal, kind of. Yeah. Because uh, a mom who, <laughs> who has almost lost one daughter because of a monkey, it speaks to everyone. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't, like, uh, even us on the field, we don't speak the same language, but it was easy to um, understand her emotions. Yeah. And uh, I think this is a good way to say the villager have a problem, What's the problem? Uh, the monkey attack villagers. 
uh, but at the same time, why do they attack? Because uh, like big uh, Chinese company uh, like cut the forest and make roads in Guinea, for example. Uh, it's not only Chinese company, it's many yeah. and, and villager, even them cut the forest to make uh, to make uh, like fields to to live. Mm. So, yeah. I don't know where we started. <laughs> <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> and uh, what type of um, artwork are, are you attracted to? <laughs> I'm definitely not into music. Like oh. I'm terrible at, like I have a terrible knowledge of music. I don't know much. Uh, I'm really like, a, I'm maybe a bit too focused on images, but I really, I, on my learning process, uh, I, I was, I started with kind of sometimes painting and uh, after photography, from journalists and from totally like everyday photography also is really interesting, but it's, and then cinema and everything related to images kind of interested me. Uh, Do you know why? I, I don't know. No, I'm really, it's just the best way to like a uh, kind of uh, have emotions or something you know i'm sure you as a dancer is a uh, like uh, dancing or uh, meditating or everything is a good way to qu kind of connect to your emotions yes and for me images is a good way to uh, transfer kind of emotions also mm -hmm. um I'm not filming the same way if a story is sad than if it's uh, like a cool and a dynamic story. You don't film the same way, mm. even in, in a news story. You, it's, we don't use the same code. So it's always um, with images, you are trying to make the people who are in their couch feeling uh, what you are feeling on the field. It's like if uh, it's a sad story, you have to kind of film the, the way it will be understandable that this is a sad situation, mm -hmm. kind of. Or this is a dramatic situation or a really happy or really dynamic. So... I kind of think that uh, it's also as you use dance to uh, to connect to your own body and own emotion. Uh, it's the kind of the same uh, when we are holding a camera. Hmm. And as a human being on the planet, <laughs> what is your strength in life? I don't know if I... I never thought of it before. One of your quality? One really important quality for me is curiosity. Mm -hmm. For example. And I'm not sure it's a strength, but it's still really important in my everyday life to be always curious of everything, kind of. Uh, sometimes it's difficult or it's really demanding, but it's it's really important and it matters a lot for me to be always curious and kind of if i don't understand something kind of try to learn how to understand and what are the key uh, it doesn't matter if i agree or not with what i'm learning but uh, i need to be curious about it mm. And is there anything you would like to be better at? Speaking English. <laughs> um, be better. I would love to be better at photography, for sure. I would love to make a living uh, as a photographer. That's kind of a dream for me. Uh, 
because it's not the same as uh, working for the TV and for me, but photography is kind of a, um, a goal. Uh, hmm. But uh, it takes time and some people are, have a, I've worked a lot to achieve what they have achieved in photography and I'm not working a lot right now. Uh, and and I would love to be better uh, uh, in everyday life to <laughs> uh, be um, like cooking, for example. <laughs> but um, like uh, staying in touch with people is difficult for me because I work a lot uh, and sometimes I'm tired and I don't have time for the people that matters to me but I would love to um, definitely be better at that hmm. is there anything that scares you? Mm, yes I think a, a lot of things scares me. Uh, we don't, we haven't talked about that, but with a camera, uh, it's much more easier to do something that scares you no normally. <laughs> like when I have a camera, I can do things that I would have never done without a camera. That's funny to realize that. Um, what scares me? is kind of that I invested myself a lot uh, in my uh, today's work, but I don't know um, if I'm able to do something else. Like I don't have much more, like uh, having a camera and taking images and telling story and doing journalism is a, like is being specialist of nothing kind of. So you don't know much like you, you don't know to do something else kind of it's something that scares uh, a lot of young journalists i think but if it doesn't work for us in journalism what we are going to do we don't have many qualities or um, like um, technical competence uh, we are uh, we have uh, like abilities that are really useful to journalism, but we don't know um, if if I want to do something else. I would love to discover many, many different uh, like uh, works and things in my life, but I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. So losing my job or losing journalism kind of is really scary because I would... I would kind of love to do something else, but I I'm, I really don't feel um, capable of doing something else. Mm. I, I uh, for now I really think that uh, journalism is the only thing I, I'm able and kind of good at. Uh, but so yeah, it's kind of weird to realize how uh, little are your abilities in a in a job and if I want to do like I don't know uh, agricultural stuff or even even in photography I don't know many things I don't know this field work I don't know I, I only know the what I'm doing now and it's difficult if I want to do something else mm -hmm. and that's scary <laughs> <laughs> what's your strongest desire in life to feel good that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> yeah to, i i it's important for me to to feel good or and the people around me are okay that's that's the only thing that matter kind of <laughs> do you want to be liked or approved and by who liked or, or approved. approved yes of course it's difficult to to avoid that 
parts because it's it really matters when people who are um, who have experience or who are good in your works in your like field um, say you are good at it too uh, it's it's matter the la reconnaissance des pères quoi um, yeah being recognized and yeah by by the people who do the same yeah. things as you it it really matters when uh, and to be and i think a lot of uh, for example uh, it's it's uh, the highest level of it but uh, you know all the prices in artistic domain like cinema journalism yeah. they are given by other journalists or uh, um cinema people or uh, yeah. and and it's it matters for this price matters because they are not given by uh, uh, everyone but given by the people who do the same thing than you and they are saying yeah you are you are really good at it and that that matters to me i think hmm. even if it's a, a small bubble you know where Like a uh, journalism, it's a small bubble. Everyone knows everyone, and uh, everything. Everyone is watching what people do, do uh, but not many people um, knows how it's made and oh, what are the, condi uh, the conditions and uh, the difficulties of uh, like today's journalism. So it's. It's also, it's at the same time, it's like, uh, it matters to me and I know it's not everything because what is really important is to make a good story and for people to get informed through this story. Hmm. And who inspire you? Hmm. On every day, like on my everyday life, uh, there is a journalist in, in Rennes uh, that is really good. He works for the channel that is uh, like for France 2. Mm -hmm. And I'm working for mainly for the TF1. So he is really good and he kind of... Uh, showed me a lot of things um, and I'm really watching everything every new, uh, every film he is doing I'm watching it and I'm kind of trying to learn oh, how do you do that and because we are working in the same city on the same area and uh, it's good he is really talented and really good um, his name is Mathieu Baudouin um, and also Like so many things inspire me. There is not like uh, only not only people, but sometimes it's it doesn't like I'm watching the TV and I'm watching a, an advertising or something, and I feel like this this image was good, and oh, mm. I, I kind of can use it in a, sometimes to to make a transition or to to film a. To tell us to tell a story, or uh, so when you start being into images, you watch everything around you with a lot of interests, and you always see things through a camera, or to <laughs> you always feel like, oh, the light is good here, we could do that. Uh, so, so many things, and sometimes. I just want to add someone I, I, I discovered a long time ago. Uh, she is American. It's someone called Nan Goldin. Mm -hmm. Aileen from the montage. The day after I edited this episode, I was going to Amsterdam and booking a ticket for the Stedelijk Museum. I hope my pronunciation is right. And oh, surprise! 
there was a huge exhibition of Nan Goldin's work. So of course I booked a ticket for this exhibition. And I can now tell you that this artist is amazing and that you should really check her out. I am in love. And I really recommend you to okay. watch it. Watch what, because she is um, a woman who was not a professional photographer at the moment she, she started, but she started taking photographs of her everyday life. Mm -hmm. And she was kind of into like problems of drugs in, in the US in the late 60s. Uh, or even later, I think. I, I don't really know when was it, but uh, the thing that is really interesting uh, with her work is that she was not a professional and she was not even good at taking pictures, like technically good. Mm -hmm. uh, she didn't knew much about it, but her point of view, her honesty and mm. the, like uh, her pictures are really harsh, I think. Yeah. Um, so that was really kind of mind blowing for me because I was so trying to understand the technique and the, all the settings you have to know and everything, mm. but it doesn't matter much <laughs> at the end. Like uh, even without knowing the technique, she was really making a good job and technically not good pictures and not following the classical rules of uh, like image composition and everything. But it was really still interesting and really good. So that was really inspiring for me because sometimes you don't have to follow the rules to make uh, good images. Hmm. If you were an animal, what would you be? Hmm. Uh, an animal, what, what would be yours? A bird. A bird to fly <laughs> or to sing. <laughs> Not uh, to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe something that swim or is in the sea. I don't know a turtle. <laughs> turtle is you good. You could be a turtle. It's good. Because there is so much, so many things that we don't know underwater. And I would love to <laughs> learn or to dive, to be honest. Uh, so a turtle right now feels okay because it's a reptile and I really love reptiles too. <laughs> and what's your favorite color? Color? It used to be red when I was, I, I was a child. Uh, for now, I don't really... You don't have one? No. I, I still feel like red was the one I had, I, I was into <laughs> child, so it's still red, <laughs> but uh, it's not my favorite color. <laughs> I really to, uh, like colors. Um, I really like when they are well used and it doesn't matter uh, what color it is, but it's interesting to understand how colors work together. Mm. So that's that's what makes me feel like red is not my favorite color because uh, I like uh, blue and orange really work together. So my, maybe my favorite color is blue and orange at this period of the time. And, and maybe it can be green and pink, for example. Uh, hmm. Like learning how colors works together is really interesting. Hmm. Is that something you learn with photography? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's really easy to understand by looking at paintings. I don't know much about paintings. Okay. But um, painters, when they uh, do realistic stuff or not even realistic, they can sometimes use only one color to a monochrome yeah. uh, or uh, use only two colors and 
and photography, you can never be close to that mm. uh, because sometimes there is a red, uh, red details and it fucked up your blue <laughs> monochrome because <laughs> there is one red stuff. Uh, but it's it's cool to understand it the the work of painters uh how they associate colors colors because it's um it's better later to take images by uh, associating kind of color and it's always if you move around your subject you can change the color that are in your image hmm. and do you feel like you know yourself very well not even close as you know yourself. I, <laughs> I feel like you have worked so much at kind of understanding yourself. And I, 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 I have been a lot, um, I have um, been a lot fascinating by how much you try to listen to your body and yourself. And I've never done something close to that. <laughs> So I don't, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so at all compared to compare or not to compare myself to you, but, uh, I'm, I'm kind of interested by what you've done. Uh, and I'm really, um, sensible. Uh, I'm really interested in like knowing and working on, Uh, what what you have done uh, by working on your like yourself expressing your body and how you move or you stand or you or you meditate or calm yourself or uh, deal with stress or uh, everything but I'm, I've never done something like that and I'm not really kind of um, I don't feel it necessary for me Uh, and uh, I'm not sure I know really well myself because we have always progressed to make on this uh, kind of journey with uh, with us <laughs> and if you could meet um, your 15 years old self what would you say? hmm Maybe don't bring snakes at home. <laughs> but <laughs> spiders. No, that was good. <laughs> but I still have the snakes, <laughs> and I, I'm like, oh, it's been a long time, and it, uh, we still have ten more years to to go, <laughs> to go with the snakes. So, <laughs> uh, I'm, I, yeah, fifteen year old, uh, I had snake frogs, and it was good at this moment. But the snake was a bit too much. <laughs> um, uh, otherwise, maybe um, I won't say um, nothing to to pro uh, like uh, I would yeah to change something or too important kind of. Mm. Uh, it's it was really important for me to make mistakes and to change uh, things in my life, and it's. If I, w I, I have no regrets of uh, like uh, starting scientific uh, studies and stopping it to do journalism and, uh, or meeting people uh, and changing places and everything. It's always uh, good to have experience. So I would probably only speak about the snake. <laughs> What is not really, really necessary <laughs> now. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you learn and grow? By making mistakes, <laughs> definitely. Uh, sometimes it's it's sometimes difficult, but it's good to make mistakes. Yeah. Do you have any coming project for the future? Mm. Apart from buying a dishwasher? Yeah, definitely <laughs> buying a dishwasher. Um, currently, we just started this kind of a new project. Uh, it's been a year that we are here in Rennes. 
Um, and it's, it's what my project is actually. It's uh, to stabilize this new office of uh, TF1 in Rennes. And my ongoing project for the two next year is to um, kind of teach, even if I'm really young, to teach someone, but the oh, nice. apprentice, we, like uh, the um, uh, student, we have a student uh, in, in Rennes that is doing the same job uh, as me. Uh, so I'm teaching her uh, kind of what I know, even if I don't have much experience in everything, but it's a big responsibility for me. And it's, it really, it is uh, really kind of stressful to, to teach someone. <laughs> and I, I uh, like, it's uh, an everyday fight with yourself saying, yeah, you can do it. You can, you, it's interesting to, um, for you to teach someone, even if I'm still learning so many things with people who, who have m much more experience than me and uh, you have never finished learning things, but hmm. uh, it's, uh, you know, le legitimacy to teach is, yeah. is weird to even uh, like uh, it's weird because I'm young and I'm a beginner. Mm. I'm a beginner in this work and I have someone that is even much more beginner than me, but uh, it's still <laughs> really early. <laughs> um, to finish with, do you have any recommendation of a film, a book you've read recently? Mm. Or Yeah, I be, I've been listening on audiobook to all the Harry Potters and oh. <laughs> uh, lately. It's really good. But um, yeah, I, I told you Nan Golding mm -hmm. is really an interesting uh, photographer and she, is, she made some books. I, I'm not sure it's easy to find them because I'm not sure they are really successful. Mm -hmm. um, but she is really, really interesting uh, knowing her life and knowing... Oh, she started, or oh, she keep doing it, and what her journey around photography was, uh, and still is a, a little. So I would definitely recommend uh, Nan Golding. Okay, I'll put everything in the notes of the episode. Okay. The, um, but watch it. You will. <laughs> and do you want to direct people who are listening to like your Instagram or like I don't know website or no? no. No, thank you. Thank you. No, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> thank you, Kilian. <laughs>